Amazon just released the Fire TV, and the race to claim a spot in your living room has officially begun. Apple, Google, Roku, and now Amazon all offer competing set-top devices that help bring content to the big screen. But which is best? Let's start off with specs so we can see what we're working with. The Apple TV comes in at $99 with a 1 GHz processor, half a gig of RAM, 802.11 A, B, G, and N Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as support for Apple AirPlay and a remote control. The Roku 3 is also $99 with a dual-core Broadcom A9 processor, half a gigabyte of RAM, 802.11 A, B, G, and N support, a microSD expansion slot, and a motion controller. Looking at the new Amazon Fire TV, 99 gets you a 1.7 GHz quad-core processor, 2 GB of RAM, the Adreno 320 graphics, 802.11 A, B, G, and N Wi-Fi, a remote control, and an optional gaming controller. Last, we have the Chromecast. At just 35 bucks, you get a single-core processor, half a gig of RAM, single-band Wi-Fi, Chrome tab mirroring, and you can use your phone or computer as the controller for this device. So when you're hooking up these devices, you're going to be greeted with a variety of different ports and hardware. The Apple TV is a small flat square, it's 3.9 inches on each side and 0.9 inches thick. The top has a matte finish with an Apple TV logo, and you have a glossy trim around the sides. Looking at the back, there's a power in, HDMI, micro USB, optical audio, and ethernet. The device is really tiny, but the glossy border definitely collects dust. The remote screams minimalism, it's just kind of a small slab of aluminum with a few buttons for media control. Looking at the Roku 3, it has a bit more playful look to it. The sides are 3.5 inches and it's 1 inch thick. The device itself feels pretty cheap and it's not as solid as the Fire or Apple TV, but then again the device is not meant to be held. It also has these curved sides and a purple Roku logo protruding out the side. On the opposite side you have a USB port and on the back you'll find power out, a reset switch, HDMI, and a micro SD slot. The Roku 3's remote control definitely offers the most features. There's a ton of buttons everywhere as well as a headphone jack. The controller actually has some motion aspects like the Wii controller as well. However, like the console itself, the remote feels very cheap. The buttons can be mushy and the coloring really makes the device look like it's meant for kids. Looking at the Amazon Fire TV, the device, much like the Apple TV, is very solid and has superb build quality. It's physically the largest device out of the four, but at just 4.5 inches on each side and 0.7 inches thick, it's still pretty tiny. Similar to the Apple TV, it features a matte black top and glossy black sides. The back hosts a power port, HDMI, optical audio, Ethernet, and USB. The included remote control pairs perfectly with the device. It's made of soft touch plastic with glossy buttons and a dedicated voice dictation button. Now, speaking of fitting in, from a sheer looks perspective, disregarding the Chromecast, the Amazon Fire TV will probably look best with just about any media setup. You can also buy an additional game controller for 40 bucks. It's very similar to the Xbox controller and with a vast amount of games found on the Fire TV, it can definitely add to your experience. Finally, the Chromecast, which is without a doubt the smallest device of the four. Its design is based off that of a flash drive. It's 2.8 inches long and 1.3 inches wide. It feels like a piece of plastic, but then again, it does live behind your TV. There's a micro USB port on the Chromecast, which serves as your main source of power. The device does not come with a remote. Instead, you actually use an existing phone, tablet, or computer to control the content that's displayed. So let's take a look at some of the software that's among these devices. Starting off with the Apple TV, the interface very much looks outdated. It may just be me, but it definitely feels distanced from other UIs developed by Apple. Even though it looks a bit old, it's very simple and easy to use. It lags here and there, but then again, with half a gig of RAM, I wouldn't really expect this thing to fly. You're granted full access to the iTunes incredible amount of media, and you also have Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, and YouTube. I think one of the more interesting features on the Apple TV is AirPlay mirroring, meaning if you have a Mac, iPhone, or iPad, you can actually send your display to the big screen. I personally found this feature pretty cool, it did kind of tend to wear down over time, but then again, I don't own a Mac, so I could really only use this with my iPhone. However, there's no game support, and Amazon Instant support's not there, as well as Showtime or Pandora. Shifting over to the Roku, the interface is much more lively. Everything looks clean, and overall it's a very snappy and enjoyable experience. 
Similar to the Apple TV, you have access to Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. However, with the Roku TV, you have the addition of Amazon Instant Video, Showtime, and Pandora. Also, with the Roku, you have a full library of games, including popular titles like Angry Birds. The addition of games, well, the Roku does not try to compete with the game console, makes the device much more versatile. And with the addition of the motion controller, you can really get into the games you're playing. The controller also has a very unique feature, the headphone jack. If you're up late at night and don't want to bother your partner, you can just plug in a set of headphones and listen through the remote. However, the Roku is not perfect, it is slow at its moments, and search can take some time. Now, the Fire TV is the new kid on the block. With that said, Amazon has looked at its competition and strived to improve on everything they've done. The interface is right at home with Amazon's lineup of Kindle tablets. That said, I think it looks the nicest out of the group. Not only does it look great, it's really fast. And I mean really, really fast. If there's one thing that you get from this comparison, it's that the Fire TV is unbelievably snappy and responsive. You have access to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Instant Video, and just about every other service except HBO Go. Amazon has also included a very efficient voice control feature. You can search for movies, games, shows, and even actors to find movies they've been in. It all works pretty well, and you also have access to an expanding game library. And with the additional game controller, this could easily replace a game console for the very casual gamer. Finally, we have the Chromecast. Now, I left this device last for a few reasons. In all honesty, it doesn't really hold its weight around the other three consoles, but then again, it's only 35 bucks. The Chromecast doesn't really have an interface to it, but when the device is inactive, you see some nice photos. But if you want to access any of your content, like Netflix, you open up the app or website on your phone and click the Cast button, and the Chromecast will begin playing your media. It has a very minimal mirroring feature that allows you to mirror a tab in Google Chrome, but it's laggy and slow. I would like the ability to mirror an Android screen, but unfortunately that feature isn't there yet. Point being, the Chromecast is very bare bones. It plays YouTube, Netflix, and HBO perfectly, but don't expect much more from this small device. To wrap things up, we have four very capable devices that all bring their own features to the table. The Apple TV mixes minimalism with ease of use, the Roku creates a family-friendly experience, the Fire TV just flies through content, and the Chromecast just works. But if I was going to spend my money, $99 would without a doubt go to the Fire TV. It's clear that Amazon fixed a lot of the problems that other devices have, and did I mention how fast it was? However, if you're very invested in the Apple ecosystem, the AirPlay mirroring feature on the Apple TV is very enticing. Finally, if you're cheap like me and want a device just to watch YouTube and Netflix, the Chromecast is a great option. However, if you have an Xbox, PlayStation, or Blu-ray player, the Chromecast is probably pointless because Chromecast key features are available on a lot of other devices. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and let us know which device you're going to be picking up in the comments below. Also drop us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to stay tuned for the full Amazon Fire TV review. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.